In my experience, the one scrum event that's mostly neglected is the sprint review. And I get this question a lot, Aisha, if we don't have a valuable increment, do we still hold the sprint review? Oh, I'm a scrum master. To be honest, I don't know what to do during sprint review. What, oh, do we really have to have a sprint review? Oh, I work in a safe environment. We have our system demo. Do I still need a uh, sprint review? And my goal to this for this video is to basically cover what is sprint review, the role of the scrum master during sprint review, and if we should continue to have sprint review. Welcome back to Aisha Scrum. I'm very happy to have you all join my platform for my existing Scrum subscribers and my new subscribers. I welcome you all to my channel and thank you all for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. So before we cover all these typical questions uh, you might be asked as a Scrum Master when it comes to Sprint Review, let's first discuss what is Sprint Review, which is the first topic in my board. Basically, Sprint Review, according to the Scrum Guide, is one place where the whole team will come together and showcase what was accomplished during the sprint. And it is very important that as a scrum team, we actually not only discuss which, uh, what we want to do, but at the end of it, we should basically show what we are able to, what we're able to accomplish and how did it look like, right? Going back to my next question of saying, why sprint review, right? Why sprint review? And it's very important for you all to know that as an Agile team, the sprint review, it's very, very important, right? It's very, very important Scrum event whereby we should push for it to happen as a Scrum Master. Not like enforce it to people, but at the same time, it's very important for us to ensure that our team are basically demoing their work. And why is that, right? So let's think back to the foundation of the Agile Manifesto, right? Uh, if you look at the principle number two, it stated that uh, working software over comprehensive documentation, right? Uh, prior to people doing Agile, a lot of people were very focused on gathering requirements, uh, having everything documented, documented, very nice conversation, multiple meetings back and forth, what we plan to do. Everything will be said and nice and look good, right? But at the end of it, we really, really want to show what we are able to accomplish incrementally, right? And that's the key point here when it comes to sprint review. Uh, it is true, sometimes we don't have everything already completed, but it's very important for us to showcase the little we have accomplished within the sprint. And that's where the sprint review comes in place. As a team, we should try to showcase the tiny increment we are able to accomplish at the end of the sprint. Even if you didn't accomplish anything, it's still a very good habit for your team to at least go in there and discuss what happened, why you didn't have accomplished accomplish anything, or the other challenges you faced. But don't be that scrum team whereby you basically be like, oh, uh, let's just skip sprint review or cause it's, uh, we have to go to the stakeholder. I'm afraid to speak in front of the stakeholder. And we say we're gonna do this and we'll accomplish it. But instead, we really, really want to be transparent, right? We want to be transparent and be honest about the progress of our work and come clean to leadership, stakeholder, and everyone. But in my experience, I've seen a lot of teams to be so afraid of the sprint reviews meeting. And sometimes I feel like we Scrum Masters can do a better job in uh, influencing the team and changing their mindset from going to sprint review as an exam, right? Where you are reporting to leadership and management, but basically for them to have that open mindset as a place to go for feedback where we can improve the product we are working on and where we can improve uh, moving forward. And at the same time, to get validation from these stakeholders that if we are doing the right thing, unlike we being so afraid to show what we have because we don't want to get a feedback whereby or it's gonna make us start all over again. It's actually okay if you start all over again, right? Because that's why in the first place we are building incrementally. So sprint review is very, very important for a scrum team to practice, right? Don't be that scrum master or that team that you always wanna question 
why you want to do a scrum review and even you the scrum master not even trying to emphasize and promote this one meeting because i've seen this meeting as the most neglected scrum event in my experience working as a scrum master and also now as an agile coach so please promote sprint review because that is very very important so the next thing i have on the board is who attends sprint review right uh i've seen a case where there's a lot of debates on this like oh who should i invite in sprint review who, do, who shouldn't attend sprint review and do we even have to have sprint review right but it's very important that if you have in a sprint review you should have some kind of stakeholder in that sprint review meeting don't call a team demo meeting or a team demo at the end of a sprint or at the end of a daily scrum calling that sprint review when you basically do not have any stakeholder it's actually very important to have some kind of stakeholder sometimes this can be like engineering manager uh, quality analyst manager or depending the nature of your work you might have different uh, leadership stakeholders or sometimes even some part of people that are end users that will basically will join this meeting to see the true updates of the work uh, do not count I know what I'm talking about people are like, oh, are you sure what you mean by uh, parking lot sprint review yes I've seen that a lot people will be like oh yeah I just did a sprint review I'm like hmm when did you do sprint review? Oh, yesterday in our parking lot, uh, the, de the dev team showed me what we did and the PO approved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's maybe that's just part of the process you have in your definition of done that the PO, you must showcase the work to the PO before the PO approve it. Yes, that's still demoing for the PO to validate that this work is working going by the acceptance criteria, right? But that's different from sprint review. The sprint review, what makes it so unique is the attendance of the stakeholders, right? So do not account your demo in sprint review or parking lot demos as your sprint review. Because sometimes I've seen people say, oh no, we've done it. No, that's not sprint review. You should have some kind of reoccurring, uh, reoccurring um, invite in your calendar as a scrum master so that everyone will know that, oh, on this date, on this day, we all will be showcasing what we have or what we even accomplished or we didn't even accomplish. To the stakeholder so that's very important so the next thing i have on my board is basically the role of a scrum master i have like three different um scenarios on the role of a scrum master prior to uh sprint review during sprint review and after sprint review so it's another very common question i get a lot for a lot of mentees they'll be like okay aisha uh i've i have this position i got to this position i've been here for the past two months I've noticed that we don't have any sprint review in our calendar. What would I do? All right. So the first thing always, if you go to a company or you go to it, uh, or you have a new team and you've noticed that they've sent you a calendar about that one, is to ask. Uh, okay. Uh, I see we have I've done like two sprints with you all. I've noticed that uh, we didn't have any sprint review. So how about we talk about when or how should we include incorporate sprint review into our sprint events, right? And Sometimes they will start saying, oh, no, we can't have it. Oh, we don't have stakeholders. Oh, our stakeholders are not available. Sometimes that's another common one you'll hear people say. Oh, our stakeholders are so busy. They don't have our time. We don't think they'll have time to do this. So let's let's just skip it, right? So that's something that you scrum master. Sometimes you have to go through the PO uh, and get a buy-in from your product owner. Go to your tech lead and get buy-in. Just go to a little behind the scene and do your own little lobbying. And hopefully they can now come together as a team and agree on that meaning. But let's first discuss the role of the scrum master prior to sprint review. Let's say now you now have a team. They agree now have this calendar, uh, this date on your calendar. So the first thing first you will do before even scheduling your sprint review is to check in with the stakeholders, right? Because sometimes we all know some of our stakeholders, they are very busy, right? That's not, that is true, right? So although sometimes we plan to, and it's best for us to have the sprint review prior at the end of every sprint, right? But sometimes due to the calendar or uh, due to stakeholders, onshore, offshore, uh, time difference, all these different time zone differences, you might have to schedule it look for a way how you can bend and be flexible where you can at least have it in your calendar even if it's not even it's after the sprint close or even in middle of the sprint or before like one or two days before the sprint close just to accommodate everyone right and having that set uh, meeting in everyone's calendar right and make it reoccurring right don't just schedule for one sprint one time for this sprint and then next sprint you have to start struggling again to look for one calendar so the first thing you do is to check in with the stakeholders 
to ensure that hopefully they can leave some kind of room at least even it's for 30 minutes where you guys can come together and have this session right and check in with the team too right get don't just schedule the session without letting the team know coming together to agree on this right and also getting some kind of agenda with the team right and let's say you have a sprint review next week right and in this week uh, even during planning meeting as you are planning your work you should also should bring up uh who will be uh, demoing what and if so you start as a scrum master start having all this list down in the paper or on a, on a document somewhere oh we have so so and so demoing this and this is what we plan to uh, accomplish by the end of this this is our goal for the sprint and this is about who is going to be demonstrating this work and this is what the PO plans to accomplish by this and this is what we're looking ahead what we're going to plan to do next so this can help you for your agenda that you're going to be readjusting every sprint review because every sprint review you should definitely have different agenda based on what's going to be worked on in the sprints right and in your agenda also you should also include stakeholder feedback right don't just attend a scheduled agenda without including or having a session five or ten minutes in that session where we can have some kind of space where the stakeholders will actually have a chance to talk to the team and discuss what, what they saw or what feedback they want or what improvement they would like so that's important for you to include that in your agenda and I know some of you will be like okay Aisha my company they have us a, a unique template right and this template we have to use this template create PowerPoint presentation put everything in there before the sprint review right uh, sometimes you will see like my managers are like send you all this PowerPoint that you must do as a scrum scrum master prior to the sprint review but it's very important to always remind them right that even the scrum guy if you look at right now in the scrum guy the scrum guy is telling you that sprint review should be a working session right working session not a session where you'll be presenting powerpoint presentation like we're coming to a class right that's not what we're doing here but instead the primary goal is for the for the team to just share their screen and demonstrate what was accomplished and scrum master of course you can facilitate those sessions right which i'm going to get back to what we do during sprint review but you always look at that template and the emphasis on that template should always be about the team what they would demonstrate and i know sometimes i've done that in the past my past company where also they will want me to talk about the the, the velocity which sometimes is not bad and something you can also discuss what was the availability and this is what was uh committed this was what was completed but refrain about it being you the scrum master going there to like showcase and present the whole time about this work because that's not the purpose of sprint review right so that's number one looking at any template your company will give you uh, assesses and the time something is going to work on look at the agenda that you plan to look at the attendee and who will be demonstrating during that sprint review getting all of those things cleared off prior to going to the sprint review and now let's discuss during the sprint review so during the sprint review it's always nice to uh prior to that to send the email about the agenda right you have to re resend this agenda maybe every sprint review and you the scrum master will always will start the session and the product owner can also discover what was the plan and the goal for this review and then at the end those team members that said that they're going to showcase what was done they will not showcase the work very very important and in that case too you can also call on their names as a scrum master you can call on those team members name they go ahead they present and then at the end you will now ask the, the stakeholders for the feedback okay what feedback we want to feedback on how we can work and improve moving forward and it's very important it should be about the team you the scrum master you are only the facilitator basically facilitating facilitating the session and not being the one presenting a PowerPoint presentation. That's not what this uh, um, sprint review is all about. So then at the end of the sprint review, which is mean post sprint review session, is basically for you to send the email, follow up email and thank everyone and discuss the outcome from that session. Like put a bullet point. Oh, you, you suggested that for us to do this, do that and do this. All right, so the product owner plan to go back and look at our backlog reprioritize and reorder our product backlog and hopefully in the next coming two weeks we will get back you we'll show you back our feedback right so that's important for you to send that follow-up email after the session so everyone will be in the same page there'll be some kind of alignment between the team 
So that's what the role of a scrum master during, I mean prior, during and post uh, sprint review. So the last thing I have is the importance of asking for feedback. And this is very important. I'm saying this because sometimes people will be like, okay, Aisha, uh, if my team uh, do not have any, anything to feedback on or we didn't have anything, so do I still ask for feedback? Yes, you still ask for feedback. Maybe it is true you didn't have any some kind of valuable increments at the end, but you can use that session too to clarify the current state of work, the sprint goal, any like acceptance criteria, maybe there's some kind of question, uh, maybe things are not fully on, uh, they understand. And also the reason why you didn't accomplish anything in this sprint. What was those challenges? Maybe some of, the, some of those challenges still, we need some of those stakeholders in that meeting to help resolve some of those challenges. Or maybe there's some blockers that, they, that if they don't help you resolve it, the same issue will happen again in the new sprint. So that's why it's important to have the sprint review. Because in this sprint review, you can also bring up a lot of issues that the team faced uh, in this sprint that hopefully they can help resolve. So in the next sprint, you will not hopefully meet that same issues. So ask for feedback. Don't just go to a sprint review when the stakeholder say, okay, all right, thank you, that's it, and they'll just go. But you ask like some kind of question like, okay, what can we improve in next sprint? Uh, was this to what you were uh, expecting? What what could be better? And what can we do differently in the next sprint? And also to the PO2 for sometimes it will take a lot of notes in this case because they will have to look like they have to go back and readjust some of those acceptance criteria, reprioritize the stories they already have in the sprint. So that's why it's important for us to ask for feedback. So the next thing I have in here is when to cancel sprint review because I get this a lot of time. People are like, oh, we didn't have anything accomplished in this sprint. Should we still continue having our sprint review? Should I cancel it? No, don't cancel it. <laughs> don't cancel sprint review because to be honest, if you, if you as a scrum master, you're getting this team to see that we only go to sprint review only if you have some kind of things to show, then sometimes they will not see the value of it, right? We sometimes we tell them like, oh no, we can actually not cancel it. Let's go to this session and when we go to this session, we can get some kind of feedback with the stakeholders and know how we can improve. Or we can also go to this session and discuss the challenges that we face and why we didn't accomplish anything. If so, or what change, what can we improve? Or what about if it's them, the stakeholders that keep coming up with new changes every time? Let's say like you already planned to tell you in this sprint, sprint that, oh, we want this, we want that, we want this accomplished, we want that. And Halfway through the sprints, they come back with a new change, a new scope change, right? And then at the end, due to all these constant changes, at the end, you were unable to even complete anything for them to even to be shown, right? And then you should still go to that sprint review and tell them, oh, we were working on this particular item and we were almost near completion. And then the PO came with this one that's even more as critical, more as important. So that we had to leave that midway through the sprints and now pick on this new item where at the end of the day we were able to accomplish nothing right because if there's constant change happening constant change happening in the sprint there's a high chance at the end of that sprint that the uh, team will not even accomplish some kind of demoable increment that's why it's important for them to go to that sprint review and explain what they were working on and how they were planning to accomplish that based on these changes affected this so they can double think everything before constantly wanting to switch everything within the sprint. So do not cancel that sprint review. Encourage your team to continue to attend sprint review. And you, the scrum master, should always be a facilitator and let the team basically run this meeting and show a working software, right? Very, very important. And if you'll be finding my content valuable, like and subscribe to my channel. And if you are interested in mentorship, do not hesitate to email me at admin at See you all again in my next video.